Hello, everyone. I'm Naveen Rao. I'm the VP of Generative AI here at Databricks, uh, previously the founder and CEO of Mosaic ML. So what is DBRX? Um, well, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the models we built the platform uh, with the platform that we have our, for our customers. Uh, but I want to start off talking about Generative AI uh, as a general concept. You know, in uh, the end of 2022, when ChatGPT exploded, we saw so much interest in the capabilities of generating text. Uh, I've actually never seen this kind of interest from any technology transition where we actually have board of directors of uh, various enterprises putting downward pressure upon their management teams to start incorporating generative AI into their products, start using generative AI to improve their, uh, their operations uh, just across the whole board. However, what we're seeing is that enterprises are not able to actually adopt these technologies at scale. There are lots of friction points, many of which actually have nothing to do with the AI tools themselves. It's actually all of the plumbing and um, uh, other capabilities around security and auditability that are causing the problems. And uh, at Databricks, we're here to solve these, these issues and actually reduce friction in deployment, as well as continually improve uh, these capabilities for enterprises. So let's click in a little bit as to what the friction points are for enterprises in deployment of Gen AI and, and AI generally. So uh, first thing is no controls uh, over the data or models. So there is a huge problem here where uh, the first services were actually built as APIs, which require movement of data from uh, a production environment for a customer to some other uh, serverless backend. This sounds fine on its face. However, much of the data that's used in generative AI, especially for internal applications, is very sensitive. So customers want to know that there's no data leakage. leakage. They want to have um, reassurance that the way the data is used um, is, is in control by them. So what we've built are a set of tools that allow companies to own the models that are customized on their data. Where the model goes, your data goes. And so we need to make sure that the models are tracked and traced just like data is. And bringing AI to production is difficult. Sometimes you get unpredictable, unpredictable performance when there are uh, many users hitting this stuff. Sometimes infrastructure goes down. We need to make all of this very scalable and easy to use. There needs to be a lot more automation in the, in the production environment to keep things running. So we built uh, model monitoring and standardized operations to scale. Things like failover, load balancing, all of that stuff uh, is in the back end. And it's very easy to use. Once you have a model that hits the performance characteristics you need, we have all the productionization uh, tooling available for that model. And the last one is actually about cost. We've seen that a lot of companies are starting POCs, uh, proof of concepts. That's people, people don't care too much about cost when you're doing a POC. However, it becomes very obvious that taking that POC and scaling it up into a production workloads where you're going from, you know, a, a thousand uh, uh, data points to billions or trillions of data points as output starts to become very, very expensive. And so this becomes cost prohibitive for many companies and they need other solutions. So using standard foundation models may not be the right approach here. So we give our customers tools and options to tailor uh, things like latency and cost and balance that against performance requirements. Not every application needs the highest performing model. Can we actually exploit that and reduce costs and reduce latency? And I want to introduce DBRX. This is our uh, foundation model that we've open sourced. It's uh, uh, built for two reasons, really. The main reason we, we wanted to do this was to demonstrate the power of our platform. All of the tools used to build DBRX are available to our customers. This is something that I don't think anyone else can say is that there's literally nothing secret. Every component, into, including the, uh, the scaling of the GPUs, up to thousands of GPUs, the data filtering techniques, all of it is available to our customers. So uh, in this way, we, we want to demonstrate to our customers that you can build a leading state-of-the-art LLM with these tools. And obviously, you don't have to build something quite as big or as expensive as we, we built here, but uh, we have the ability to scale, scale up and, and handle 
um, any level of sophistication that our customers might want to throw at us. So this, this model is not only a demonstration, but it's also a useful artifact on its own. We wanted to make this model um, hit some of the use cases that our customers really care about. So first off, control. It is fully owned in that this model is open source. You can download the weights, and when you customize those weights using our tools, those resultant weights are yours. As a customer, you own that. It's a file. We claim no ownership over this. Um, it's actually very high in terms of production quality. It's, it's the best model uh, at its size and cost. It costs us about $10 million to develop this model. We did so on uh, almost 3,100 H100 GPUs for a little over 40 days. So uh, we can show that the tools can handle such a large job uh, and also scale up to jobs that are up to $10 million. But one thing to note is 10 million may sound like a lot, but if you look at the capabilities of this model, um, its performance is actually punching way above its weight. And that goes into the best price per performance. We want to build uh, a stack that's the most cost-effective to build and tune models, as well as the most cost-effective model to serve. This model is a mixture of experts architecture, which allows it to be served for something like two to three X more efficiently than other uh, comparable models, models of comparable quality. And uh, you know, we, we can show you a demo uh, later in this presentation around that. So what do we mean by full control? Uh, I mentioned that DBRX is open source, so the model and the weights are open source. You can take them and use them for your purposes. What this means is when you use our tools to fine tune DBRX, you also can download the weights and you can use that and many other services. We have ways of putting that model into production and getting very high throughputs because we've optimized it, but it isn't it's standard uh, LLM in a, a standard high torch definition. This can be used in many different scenarios, including other, um, other cloud vendors tools if, if needed. Production quality. So this is an industry leading quality per dollar model. So here are just some of the, the metrics that people have used to compare different uh, uh, LLMs out there. So MMLU is a very common one. Uh, we had the design target of you know, getting into the mid seventies because Really, we see that's a threshold of usefulness. And here are a few other models that, uh, that were close to that as well. Um, in addition, programming, actually uh, code completion, code generation, code introspection, you know, debugging is a very important workload for our users. And we want to make sure our model was very good at code. And uh, the human eval metric is a very good metric for uh, ascertaining coding capabilities. 70% is actually quite high for any model, including closed or open. And we can see the comparisons here. And of course, math as well, the GSMAK uh, metric is, is a pretty important one for uh, usability as well. So these are things that our, our uh, customers care about and we wanna make sure they have a useful artifact to start from. In addition to the model itself, we've built all of the infrastructure around the model to do governance and monitoring to take you all the way from data through to a served model. And, there, and then provide the tooling and harness to actually continually improve this model. So here's a, a quick comparison of DBRX to a dense 70 billion parameter model. Uh, DBRX is 132 billion parameters, but it actually only has 36 billion active parameters. So you can see here, when we hit enter, you'll see how fast it goes. On the left is DBRX, and it's served up at about 134 tokens per second. And on the right was a standard 70 billion parameter model that served at uh, you know, uh, around 55 or 60 tokens per second, at, at least 2x more efficient uh, for that similar weight class of model. Of course, you can make this model bigger if you choose to, uh, uh, to do so for, for better reasoning capabilities, um, or you can make a smaller variant to make it go even faster. And we're also adding new uh, uh, optimizations every day. We anticipate this number of 130 tokens per second to go up pretty drastically over the next several months. And I mentioned uh, training this from scratch cost us about $10 million. Comparable models, you know, just a year ago would have been north of $50 million. So we're constantly seeing the, the cost of model training come down. And actually, we coined this term internally. We called it Mosaic's Law, where we observe that 
the cost to train a model of a comparable quality keeps dropping by a factor of about four. We published uh, training stable diffusion back in September of 2022. It cost about $600,000. And now this model actually costs less than 50K. It's actually probably closer to 30K to train the same model. We saw the same thing happen for LLMs. For a GPT-3 quality model in uh, October of 2022, it was about $450,000. Now that same model is probably less than $70,000. So we're seeing this cost come down by an order of four, a factor of four every year. And this is actually a, quite a steep uh, exponent. And it has some pretty drastic implications on how fast the field moves, but also the cost associated with a particular capability. If something is too far out of reach today, just wait a few months and it'll come, it'll probably very likely come into reach. So Databricks builds the data intelligence platform. What we mean by this is that we want to use, we want to provide tools that our customers can use to derive intelligence from their data. Intelligence is really how we're going to improve our businesses, how we're going to drive new experiences for our customers, how we're going to improve uh, operational workflows within our, within our companies. And uh, there are a few different tools that we have in, in the arsenal for Gen AI, obviously model serving, any model, uh, that you customize, you can serve with our tools. We have an array of open source models, including Llama 3, DBRX, uh, Mistral, any of the, the popular models we'll have within the platform available as model serving. All of those are actually available to fine tune as well. So that's where you can customize models. The model architecture and all of the economics therein of DBRX are actually available to our customers. They want to pre-train a model so they can take their own data, train a model from scratch using our same architecture and getting those same cost profiles. Then finally, putting these things together in what we call compound systems, like RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, um, is something that we've seen over and over again from our customers. And we've actually built this pattern into Databricks. Uh, it's very simple to say, here are the data sources I want to introduce into a RAG pipeline. Uh, the back end will actually go and embed that data, put it into a vector, uh, a vector store that we have as well that conforms to all the governance and monitoring capabilities that we have within the platform uh, and make it very easy to, uh, to do a RAG pipeline with your model of choice. All right, so I mentioned earlier that uh, DBRX was actually built with all the Mosaic AI capabilities. In fact, it was built with not only Mosaic AI capabilities, but also Databricks capabilities uh, end to end. So building LLMs with proprietary data requires you to explore, prepare data, and do a ton of filtering. There's actually, there's actually quite a lot of prep work that goes into the data before uh, training a model. We use Databricks to do that, to build a DBRX. Uh, then once the data is prepared, actually getting the right model architecture with the right hyperparameters, uh, all of that's something that we've taken a lot of time to engineer and made into a template for our customers. We basically took all the guesswork out. Here's a standard flow that we know will work, will get you a certain amount of throughput, and, uh, and we're, we're fairly sure we'll actually converge into a working uh, model at the end of it. And, uh, and you know, we're seeing customers actually use our capabilities to build amazing models themselves. Uh, Bloomberg, Accenture, Allen Institute, these are all companies that are, uh, have taken our blueprints, brought their own data, maybe their own data filtering recipe to actually go and build something that is unique and, uh, and, and covers an, uh, a particular niche that they're going after. Uh, now I'm just going to wrap up with a few next steps and some resources that you guys can go and access uh, on your own. So we talked through uh, some of the capabilities that we have within the Databricks platform and uh, for with Mosaic AI capabilities. So DBRX is actually available in model serving today. If you are a Databricks customer, you will actually see that in your dropdown available today, depending on the region you're in. You can pre-train a custom model based upon DBRX uh, or a dense version if that's what uh, meets your needs. So this is something we call MCT currently. Uh, talk to your sales rep about this, but we can enable you to pre-train your data on just about any, any uh, size data set that you have. And we also have DBRX in the RAG application in um, a standard template we call RAG Studio that we'll be talking about in the future. Um, also, within your own RAG application that our uh, specialists can help you with. 
And in addition to that, we're going to be bringing fine tuning to DBRX. There's a few different flavors of this, continued pre-training, supervised fine tuning, but all of those will be available within our platform as a, as a standard API. And that's going to be coming soon. It's in private preview today. And of course, all of this is built on top of Unity Catalog and uh, includes all of our lake house monitoring capabilities. Where can you try DBRX yourself? Uh, probably the simplest way is to just go to Hugging Face Space. Uh, people are not familiar with Hugging Face. It's a portal uh, that basically hosts every open source model out there. It's become the, the main hub for, uh, for all things open source in the LLM world. And uh, we have enabled a space with our inference endpoints running uh, as, as a demo. So you can go there and chat with the model um, and see how fast it really is. And uh, we also have an AI playground within Databricks. So if you are a Databricks customer uh, and you can log in, you can actually get to the playground, which is under the machine learning tab, generally on the bottom left of your console. Uh, go, go log in, pull the drop down that says um, uh, DBRX, and you'll be able to chat with the model directly within your uh, Databricks console. Also, we have partners, U.com and Perplexity AI. They've actually created experiences around DBRX. Both of them have it available on their inference endpoints, and U.com can actually be powered by DBRX. The searches and the generation can come from DBRX. So how can you try it uh, locally? Well, there's actually been a few projects out there that have done some amazing things. So the GitHub is available here where you can go get the code and the weights yourself. Uh, but also the community has actually built things like a four bit uh, uh, quantized version. This actually runs on an M2 chip and a laptop, I believe, and a Mac laptop. And uh, others have built things like Llama CPP, which actually is a, is a highly optimized uh, C++ version. So there are a few of these things out there. We're gonna be adding more. Uh, so stay tuned to our research portal if you wanna see some of this community uh, created content. For our partners out there, um, go and check out the partner portal. So there you can find these decks, you can find training, other demos, ways to uh, to deliver a service like kits that we put things together. And you know we want to hear from you. We want to see these success stories because we're seeing a lot of our partners and customers build on top of this and build things in new ways that we never thought possible. When you start making things much faster, much cheaper, much more accessible, you see all kinds of creativity on a leash. And we want to see uh, those stories and actually hear about them so we can share them with the rest of our community. So please do go and share these success stories and submit any use cases uh, you see to the, to the deal registration. 